Alright guys, welcome back to another reaction video. My name is Stella, and today we're going to be reacting to Arcane Episode 4, Happy Progress Day. Now before we get started, I really just wanted to say thank you guys for welcoming me onto the channel. I know I'm new, I know it can be hard to warm up to new people, and I'm definitely just really very happy to be here. Um, I also want to introduce, we have a new guest, this is Jedediah. <laughs> You might understand that reference. Jedediah is going to sit on this little cactus. He's going to watch Arcane Episode 4 with me. Now, when we last left off, uh, it seems like Jinx, or Powder, but we think she's going to be Jinx soon, is kind of hopping on the path uh, of downfall. The path of evil, possibly. She's gone through a big emotional uh, breakdown. Her sister abandoned her. She sided with Silco. She gave him a big old hug. And it seems like he's now taken her under uh, his wing, which definitely won't be good. But I'm really excited to get into this. As always, the full-length reaction of Episode 4 is going to be up on our Patreon, along with next week's reaction, which is going to be Episode 5. So if you'd like to check that out, please hop on over there. It really supports the channel. Um, if you're new here, welcome. You're like me, brand new, figuring it out. Uh, hopefully you stick around. And hopefully, you know, as I continue with this, things are going to get better. Quality is going to get better. That's what I'm hoping. But as long as you guys enjoy these videos, I'm happy. So without further ado, let's get on into Arcane Episode 4, Happy Progress Day. You wanted to see me, Professor. Ah, come in, Jace. Can you believe it? So last we checked in, Jace seemingly has successfully made magic, right? Like created the arcane Progress power, day. the magic, which is pretty cool. I'm excited to see where that goes. Stan I've also not been reading episode descriptions, which I realize I should have been doing. Stanwick set his personal ambitions aside and focused on something far more important. He realized nothing he could accomplish could compare to the contributions of his students. I had no idea. The council has recommended you give the Progress Day speech this year. You always give that speech. <gasps> I, I could never take you. What an honor. I agree with them. Oh. Your hex gates have done wonders for our city. All right. That's a really well done time jump. I knew they had to do it because I knew that Jinx and Vi had to get older. But I really like how they did this time jump. It was in a place that made perfect sense. People love a grand reveal. Victor and I have just a thing. The next chapter of Hextech. <gasps> the next chapter? Oh, yeah. I'll look forward to it. Gosh, this is just so beautifully designed. Like, it absolutely gives me Studio Ghibli vibes with with just the design, but I, I don't know. Whenever I see it, I'm in awe. Like, it looks like a painting. Okay, so Hextech has progressed. This has definitely gotten way more advanced than the last time we saw anybody using it. Good for Jace, good for Jace and for Victor. However, I've said it before and I will say it again, a power imbalance between regular folk and magic folk is never a good thing. I've read enough books to know this, right? It's the whole muggles versus wizard situation, like. So happy progress day. What is progress day? I'm sure that's gonna be revealed if it hasn't already been and I've just missed it, but. Progress day. The visionary behind the hex gates, a beacon of trade and prosperity for our great city of progress. Kate! Serves you right. I was wondering where she went. I feel like we haven't seen a lot of her. You still avoiding her? I'm working. Oh, I can see that. I mean, there's so much crime to thwart outside your family. That was the other voice actor that I recognized. So the voice actor for Caitlin, please correct me in the comments if I'm getting this wrong, because I could be, but I'm, I am 96% sure that the voice actress for Caitlin is the actress who played Cho Chang in the Harry Potter movie. <laughs> I'll be honest, not liking the look of this guy. His plague doctor looking mask. I'm not sure what he's here to do, but I don't trust him. Oh, 
Oh, that's when a silk goes uh, in. Yeah. Manifest? Downtown. Yeah. What's he planning? That was Jinx. No. So in our time jump, she's already gone bad. Girl, no. Oh my gosh. I do want to see her though. I want to see what kind of like a transformation she's kind of gone under in the last. Check for more below. Burn it all. Ooh. Green hair we haven't seen before, I don't think. So I guess new characters or old characters with some makeovers. She's here. <laughs> oh, she's got style. Come on. She has she has a fighting flair. I don't know what how else to describe it. Okay, she's gone full bad. Bye. No, already we've got a, a reunion? I can't deal with this right now. Because you're a jinx. We just started and they're already gonna do this to me? I want to Let go of her. Come on. No. She did There's no way she actually No, she's got something on her back. She's She's not actually been shot. I don't There's no way that they would do that. That's too bold a choice. Dang. All right. So combat is crazier already. And she's fully embraced the guns. Girl, there's you're not shooting at anything anymore. They're out. You are supposed to guard the cargo. Hold on. Why does she look dead? No. No. Back up a second. You think he will approve? Heimerdinger believes science should be used to improve lives as much as we do. We just need to show them it's safe. Built the hex gates like they asked. It's our turn to decide the future of Hextech. Oh. I'm so glad you could- He reminds me of a guinea pig. Hold my boy. What do we have on the docket? A Hextech gemstone. So that's like a more stable version of the original crystal? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I want him to be my best friend. We found that little guy. I don't know if he- I mean, he's definitely got a name, I just don't know it yet. Oh, oh they're like infinity gauntlet- gaunt- gauntleting- hold on. Infinity gauntleting the gems. Alright. Ooh, all right. The Atlas gone. <laughs> the mining colonies and the fishers can work faster and without fatigue. A mechanical arm equipped with a powerful ray of light. A little self-portrait. Artificers could do with such a device. Are you I want Hextech to be a tool for. If you hurt that little thing, I will, I will end you. What amazing gentlemen. You should be very proud. Give it a decade of careful research and it will be ready. A decade? It zips past you in the blink. Maybe for you, you've been alive for 300 years. Living lives with Hextech now. 
A breakthrough like this takes time, Victor. Keep at it, and I'm sure you will discover a way to safeguard Hextech against misuse. Listen, Heimerdinger is being thorough, he's being safe, but I also 100% understand why they are frustrated, because I would be too, I'll be totally honest. If you're spending all that time, and especially something they're so passionate about, like... We're like Sherlock Holmesing this. I love it. You're from the Undercity. I didn't do anything. I can't. He'll kill me. Who? Uh, Caitlin Kiriman. Why does that not surprise me? Hey. Interfering in an investigation again. Excuse me. Can you leave and like never come back? I'm so tired of seeing his face. Ah. Yes, sir. Good. I want this one on a boat to Stillwater Prison. Yes, sir. The worst part is she's obviously really good at her job, and he's just gonna keep her on the, the graveyard shift. Just I'm just like adding it to my list of reasons why I hate Marcus. Okay, it feels like Undercity has changed. Maybe not. Yeah, it's changed. I don't know if Vando would have liked this. This wasn't Vando's vision. He had a really cute, like, you know, bar thing with all, everyone was, everyone knew each other. They stood up for each other. There are always mishaps in battle. The firelights were a target and most are dead. I expect better from you than excuses. It was your job to make sure things went smoothly. The topsiders are leaving us further and further behind. What happened? That's true, cause Ooh, oh she's I'm she's there. Me. All right. One of those firelight wackos was a girl with pink hair. Mm. Was that not Violet? Am I? Your sister's gone. I know, sisters, right? You can't live with them. Can't stuff them back in the old baby maker. <laughs> Today's screw up will set us back. I'm doing this for us, Jinx. All of us. The sons and daughters of Zon deserve more than their This show keeps tricking me. Won't happen again. So first they get me to believe that, uh, what did they get me to believe? They got me to believe that the guards were coming to get, Vi uh, to vi get Violet and it was just Vander. Now they got me to believe that Violet, you know, died. It was just a random girl with pink hair. That ogre couldn't clean a dust bunny with a blowtorch. You should focus on your gadgetry. It's interesting how lenient he's being with her. Like he's giving her time. He's actually treating her with like a decent amount of gentleness. I don't even know if I can say, like I can't say kindness, but. These people have nothing new to offer me. The only one actually worth my time is him. Oh, he's one pilt of his heart. To what do I owe the pleasure? It's Heimerdinger. When is it not? We've shown him our research. If there's a time to present a new creation, it is now. Yeah, but again, if it's not ready, you're gonna have like a disaster, which could be dangerous in front of thousands and thousands of people. The world is ready. I've already spoken to several potential investors. Investors? Of course. Everyone wants Hextech for themselves. See, this is what I'm talking about. It wasn't her. I know, just, just some wannabe street trash. What? I got confused. Okay, so she's losing it? Now he thinks I'm weak. Savika will clean it. So she's just like regular Johnny on the spot. She's got plushes of them. She's imagining him. Not weak. You may not be weak, but you need some counseling. Oh, I'm gonna show him. Y'all see. <coughs> no. 
Is his, he's getting sicker. I asked him if I could do the address. You should come oh. up with me. We're partners. No, no, I, not in front of. See, this isn't fair. Because even back at the, like, the Academy, you know, back in the earlier episodes, was, he was just an assistant, right? And he was never getting the credit for what he was doing. And now here, Jace is up on stage. Which is like, not to blame Jace. No! This isn't fair! Why is the little guy hiding from him? I feel like he knows something. Little, you know, little critters, they always can tell. They can sense out the vibes in a person really well. I know many of you probably didn't expect to see me here today. And believe me, I'm just as shocked as you are. My family and I are simple people. In our factory, we made hammers. They were probably used to cut the stones you're standing on right now. A few years ago, the Hex Gates opened their ports to the world and made Piltover prosper beyond anything we could have ever imagined. But we're not done yet. I'll be honest, this event doesn't seem to have the best security. I'm looking around. I don't trust it. This year, we've created something new for you. Something that, um... Nope. Look Heimdinger in the eyes. Because his eyes are telling you don't do it. When the time is right. Okay. Whew. Things that will bring an end to your hardships. Whether you're the scion of our high houses or an honest laborer from the underground. So they are including... They are including those in the Undercity. That's a big deal. An airship has a rigid metal hull. It's not a blimp. It's a balloon, ain't it? Pardon us if we aren't quite so refined as you, my lady. Fire! Fire! Dude! They're just standing there having a smoke. Not that they're not allowed to do that, but you're on duty bad people out there. I'm, I'm shocked that the guards weren't, like, patrolling. Help! It's so hard! Please! I'm, I'm a helpless little girl, and I've set the building on- My accident. I love that. I was gonna say when I heard the voice, I'm like, that's not a real little girl. Also, I brought this dynamite. Good burn! <laughs> All right, whoa. Girl, get up. It's not just gonna like stop exploding, you gotta run. The gemstone is gone, along with some of our research papers. She's, Jing, stop doing these things. The city has claimed responsibility yet. Girl! Did it come? So she just like slipped in there and snatched it? Again, how? How are we not guarding these things better? The underground being left Why are the guards just sitting outside having a smoke instead of like, I don't know, protecting the incredibly powerful, incredibly dangerous pieces of technology that are like yet unknown to man? Mr. Talos, Sorry, I'm getting the frustrated. A weapon with the stolen crystal? Shit. We've seen their ingenuity over the years. Of course they can. Yeah, they absolutely can. It was my responsibility to safeguard this technology, and I failed. My mistake cost people their lives. Your mind? The hex gates must remain open. Piltover status as a global shipping lane depends on it. Thousands would lose their in. You would sacrifice your life's work? Without the hex gates, my goods cannot reach foreign markets till winter. See. This is what I'm talking about. We're concerned about money. We're concerned about global status. We are not concerned. Perhaps the time has come to explore a more radical solution. What are you suggesting? Mr. Talis has demonstrated his commitment to our safety. And it seems to me only Mr. Talis has the knowledge necessary to secure the hex gate. He will have the resources necessary to protect all our investments. Councillor Murdoch. The council has held seven seats for generations. Does the boy have any experience? Okay. Only that of a scientist. This is where I get frustrated is when people go, but it's been this way for generations. We've always had seven seats. Why? Shall we vote? Come and play, but I might 
gotta have our song of the episode. Okay, I'll be completely honest. This is very relatable. There have been many, many days that I am just completely oblivious. A building blown to pieces. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you've done? Actually. <laughs> All right, I'm definitely doing my nails like her for the next episode. Maybe not the next one, maybe in a few episodes I'll get it done because I won't have time today to get that done. But next time I come in, I'll try to have nails like hers. See, he's even more level-headed than she is. So I think she might be the person that pushes him into like the most dangerous territory because he thinks through his decisions. He really seems to at least. I think whoever attacked the square is our suspect. The same symbols showed up at the botched smuggling operation at the Hex Gates. The Hex Gates? Keep up, they've overstepped. If I can figure out who made this, it could lead me directly to whoever's behind it all. If I can just work this out, Marcus will have to listen. Marcus will not listen. Have you met Marcus? Marcus never listens. That's like his entire character trait is that he doesn't listen and he makes dumb choices. I was actually hoping you might consider joining my staff. House teller security. That's a ceremonial position. I'd live behind a desk. You almost died. Yeah, but she's got to be on the field. Like that's very obviously where her skills are. And I'll be honest. No. I do wonder if because she's a woman, people don't seem to take her seriously. You know what I mean? Dude, they got like a whole river sticks thing. Folks in here aren't usually very talkative. This one was hit by friendly fire. He's got reason to talk. Must Inmate 2135. Yeah, I'm uh... Afraid that's not possible. Ugh. An incident? What kind of incident? The well, not so pretty kind. I saw some bandaged hands. Those look like the hands of someone who does a lot of fighting with their fists. Yeah, she's been in prison this whole time, hasn't she? Dude. Who the hell are you? <laughs> okay. All right, hold on. Let's pause before we move on to the next episode. Okay. All right. Gosh, all right. So many things to think about here. Just, first of all, time jump is a massive deal, but they did it so incredibly well. Like this was the perfect timing for a time jump, right? We know the direction that Jinx is on. We know the path she's gone down after last episode. Um, and you also can see the path that that Victor and Jace are going down. And I think that's the perfect, I'm talking very technical right now, but I think that's like the perfect way to do a time jump is to set up so that people have an expectation for what is going to happen during that time period so that when you make the jump, they don't feel like, you know, lost. They don't feel discombobulated. Right. Because sometimes, you know, shows, movies, you know, other things will just hit you with a five years later and you're like, whoa, hold on. I have no idea what happened in this five years. And then they spend the next 45 minutes explaining what happened. And that feels like a waste of time to me. But they really they fantastically set up what was going to happen so that when we were hit with that time jump, we all you know, you feel like, oh, I know where we are because I knew where we were going before. Does that make any sense? Probably not. Um, all right. <sighs> okay, Jinx is gonna break my heart because she's funny, she's smart, she's, you know, I don't know. But, but she's evil, like she is off her rocker evil. Um, she very clearly does not care about murdering people, destroying 
families destroying cities. And I'm not sure what she wants to get out of this. Like, I don't think she wants power. I really don't. I think she just wants chaos. Like, I think that's what she's aiming for is just to, for things to go nuts. Right. Um, and I've, you know, they've done this kind of thing before where when a character is feeling inner chaos, right, inner turmoil, they bring that out and they bring that into the world around them. But, dude, that's going to break my heart because I want to be able to forgive her, right? I want her to turn into a hero. And I know she will. But it's going to take some doing. Um, Vi, on the other hand, I have no idea. Like, prison? I don't know how long she's been in prison for. It seems like it's been a while. You know, it must have been a while. And that can really change a person. So who knows what kind of state she's in mentally, how she feels about Jinx looking back, right? Because it seemed like at the end of the last episode, she realized she messed up, right? She realized that she messed up with Jinx by losing it with her when she was just a kid. So I'm wondering if that guilt has kind of followed her. Um... Yeah, so Vi, I'm interested to see, you know, she's tatted up, she looks hardcore, she's been through some stuff for sure in the last couple of years, and I'm, I'm interested to see what side of her that's going to bring out. Um, Jace and Victor, I'm very worried about, like Jace especially, because he's, Victor I'm worried about because he's sick. The man's not doing well, and it's clear, and he seems so well-meaning. I really don't want anything to happen to him. But I don't know. They they give a character, like, an illness like that. I don't, I don't foresee good things for him. Jace, on the other hand, I'm worried about because he's famous, right? And we know, especially in media, but in real life, too, like, where fame gets people, especially people who have fame quote-unquote thrust upon them like out of nowhere right so he's famous for a reason but what he wanted to do is not what he's doing now because now especially if he gets voted onto the council he'll be pressured to use his inventions politically rather than just for the benefit of the people um of topside like he'll he'll it, it will become a political um, a pol like a political tactic. Um, whether that be weapons, whether that be, again, like they were saying, trade. Uh, there are so many ways that he can be manipulated here. And he seems... Love the guy, right? He seems nice, but he seems easily manipula manipulated. And... I worry about him in the setting of the council very deeply. Um, yeah, honestly, the characters I'm really interested in following right now, obviously every scene with Jinx, I've just loved. And we've got new voice actress from her, who's great. It's the actress, and I, I wish I could remember her name. Uh, let me know in the comments what her name is, because she's the actress from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. She's the girl who flies. I only ever read the book, and in the book, the character's name was Emma, I think. So that actress is the new voice of Jinx, and so far she's doing a great job. But I, I love every scene she's in. I can tell I'm going to continue to love every scene she's in, even if she's doing horrible, horrible things. Um, but also, Caitlin um, Kierman, I'm super excited just to see where she goes, because I love a female detective, right? I love a detective story, period, but she's very clearly good at what she does. She's very clearly going to be the one, you know, figuring out, finding Jinx, like digging Jinx out of the Undercity and hopefully bringing her to justice. Um, and honestly, I'm rooting for her because... I'm rooting for her because I'm sick of Marcus. That's it. I don't... I want Marcus out of the way. If If... If Caitlyn can become, like, the head of the, you know, police, fantastic. If she can become the head guard, awesome. Great. I'm here for it. Because Marcus just needs to back off. When has he ever done anything right? Never. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think. Well, I'm trying to get, like, all my thoughts together. 
I'm so glad I started the show, first of all. This is like, just from a writing perspective, someone who read a lot of books as a kid, this reminds me of just a really good fantasy, you know, science fiction-y series that I would have read and loved when I was younger. You know, I read everything as a kid. I read Lord of the Rings. I read Chronicles of Narnia. I read uh, the, oh my goodness, what were they called? Ah, I can't remember. Never mind. I kept the books. The Black Cauldron was one of the books, and that was made into the movie. But I read that series. Uh, Harry Potter, obviously. Percy Jackson. And, like, this is... This is up there with those so far. The way the story is unfolding is engaging. It's fascinating. It's well-written. It's well-performed. It's beautiful to look at, right? And I don't want to just gush about, like, the... Um, I don't just want to gush about the craft of the show. Obviously, I want to be in the world of the show. But I'm that, too. Like, I'm fully invested in everything that's going on. Um, so, honestly, yeah... I'm loving this. I'm excited to see where this is going. I'm also a little bit scared because if I cried at episode three, they got me invested enough to cry the third episode. There are eight episodes, I think, of the show, meaning we are halfway done. No, nine episodes. So we're about halfway done, which is terrifying to me because that means you know, the emotional stakes are going to get higher. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get more intense. I don't know if I can handle that personally. Um, but I am, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Uh, as always, the full length reaction is going to be up on Patreon along with next week's reaction, which is going to be episode five. Everybody wants to be my enemy. Hey, that's the lyric from the song. Um, so if you want to check those out, please do. Please support the channel because we love to have you here. Um, and I want to say another thank you. I know I said one in the beginning, but like I am so grateful to be here and to be doing this. Um, and I know that I'm, I'm new and I'm learning and I appreciate everybody for bearing with me as I learn because I'm going to learn. But for right now, I'm just having a good time. Started out with a fantastic show. Um, I'm loving doing these. I'm excited to keep watching episodes five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then from there, who knows? So anyways, uh, I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week, rest of your day, rest of your year. And peace out.